Hello, welcome to Sky Sports News. I'm Larry Longschlong, and thank you for joining me today on this brand new show, Sky Sports Happy Hour. Now, today's show is going to feature the newly promoted Premier League team, Manchester Central. They're moving into a new stadium. We've got a, one of our best reporters reporting live from the Sir Brett Dalton Stadium today. We also have an exclusive interview with the Manchester Central manager, Bood FM, who will also be joining us in the studio later. Also, at the end of the show, I'll be talking about how freaking amazing my hair is, the products I use, and how you two at home could have hair like me. Right, let's head down to the stadium where our reporter is reporting live, live at the stadium, right now, live. Thanks, Larry. It's Thomas Fister here at the new Sir Brett Dalton Stadium, and what a sight it is behind me. But I was under the impression it was going to be Dubai or somewhere like that, looking at the weather, it looks like it behind me. No, apparently it's not going to be like that. Uh, it's Thomas, it's going to be freezing your f- off weather. And that is exactly what I'm doing. Look at me. I've not even got a coat. I'm freezing my f- off. I mean, can't you even provide us with a coat? None of you. It's more a load of sh- set of f- as they are. I mean, what, what the hell am I supposed to do now? I'm freezing my f- off. I've even got f- sandals on. And my toes like feel like they're going to fall off with frostbite. Chuffing Manchester. It's like middle of chuffing Iceland or somewhere. Well, thanks for that epic piece of journalism there, Thomas. Thank you. We'll uh, be heading back to the Sir Brett Dalton Stadium later where we have a, a bearded YouTube sensation, apparently, opening the stadium. Must be PewDiePie. Must be. No. If it's Logan Paul, I am going home. He hasn't got a beard. No. Who? 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 I keep saying who, because I haven't got a clue who it is. Never heard of him. Hopefully, you at home will know who he is. So, right now, we're going to go live to a pre-recorded interview where our other reporter, who's hopefully a bit more professional, Jamie Jameson, great name, um, had an exclusive interview in the new tunnel at the Sir Brett Dalton Stadium with the manager, Bood FM. Hello, Bood. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us here on Sky Sports News and what is an important day for you and the club. Yes, massive day. Um, brand new stadium in the Premier League. Uh, massive party time. It's 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 brilliant. I mean, it's just fanta- a fantastic day for a fantastic club, mate. There is a real carnival atmosphere here today. I've just seen Sir Brett Dalton and his family meeting fans on the pitch. The new stadium really is something special. Yeah, it is, it is amazing. I mean, it is only, um, it's not the biggest stadium yet, but it's state of the art, it's modern. The technology in this place is amazing. Um, and it can be expanded more than double, so I think that's fantastic. We've got a great future at the club. Um, but the best thing about it is we've got a home. We've never had our own home, ever. So no more we're living in the shadow of uh, Manchester City or Man United. We can start competing now. Now, if you don't mind, I have to ask you about Fatgate. A personal text between you and a friend was released to the press where you called another manager fat. What are your thoughts on the whole situation now? Seriously, I don't really give it too much thought. I think it was pathetic. Uh, manager in question used to be my friend and then it fell out of me over something stupid, um, which was you know sad. But then he's publicly um, accused me of things, said bad things about me, which I just ignored. I didn't screenshot and publicise what he was saying and that was forgotten about and I had a private conversation which was never a personal attack on the person or maybe I shouldn't have said what I said and um, but it wasn't a personal attack and it gets out in the public domain I get attacked I'm the worst thing since Donald Trump and freaking Paul Logan and I lost a lot of friends but I'll be honest with you it's times like that when you realize who your mates are and I did find that out and I'm pretty happy really because I don't have to bother with the freakers anymore, do I? So, yeah, I'm, I'm over it. Um, yeah, don't think about it. Five consecutive promotions now sees you in your central side in the Premier League. It's a fantastic achievement and something you no doubt are proud of. What do you say to those in the press that are saying you must have cheated? Well, it's pretty pathetic, really. I mean, I've been involved in Football Manager for 20 years. I've been involved in the game nearly every day apart from when I'm on holiday for 20 years and I just I just do the basics in my management managerial job I've got a great team around me it's not it's not just me but 
we've got a simple tactic, we get players that fit that tactic and we've been successful with it. And we've got a great bunch of lads here. A lot of them have come from non-league football. They're now going to be playing in the Premier League. It's it's a fantastic achievement. And when someone tries to, people build you up and then want to knock you down. So I'm really uh, proud of what we've achieved. And I don't really care what they say. Now, with £20 million to spend, do you think you have the resources to strengthen the squad and stay in the Premier League? The bookies do have you as favourites for the drop. <sighs> Not really, mate, I'll be honest. Um, I've... See, what I want to do is want to give a lot of these lads a chance, and that's what I'm going to do if I can. I'm keeping the players I've got. Plus, with £20 million in today's money, you could probably go out and buy an OK player with £20 million. So, I think the way we've got here so far is by promoting our own players, training our own players and trying to find young bargains that we can develop ourselves and I'm going to carry on with that same mentality same philosophy at the club we're not going to go out and buy some old geezer who's just here for a payday if we have to go down and come back up you know that'll have to happen but I'm excited we're also hearing that no matter your league position at the end of this season this will be your last year as central manager I'll be honest with you you never know football's football I mean I've been offered a couple of jobs this summer and I've not accepted them obviously um, but you never know what's going to come your way I love this club I've got a contract for a couple of years um, but things have to come to an end at some point you can never say never in football mate well thanks for talking to us today Bood I'm going to stick around for the opening of the stadium I might even buy a I love Sir Brett Dalton t-shirt go and get yourself one mate knock yourself out helps the club out everyone's got them I've got one even my grandma's wearing one mate so yeah thanks well, what an informant's his interview. Thomas, take notes, clown. Right, now we're going to the grand opening where the YouTube bearded sensation is going to be opening the stadium right now. Let's head on over back to Manchester. Okay, everybody. Yeah, so if we could just settle down for a minute. Yeah. Okay, let's get this show on the road. Hi there, my name's Loki Doki, uh, YouTuber, streamer, extraordinaire, and I am delighted and honoured to be welcomed to the open, the brand new stadium behind me, this amazing piece of architecture, sort of roundness going on behind me, uh, for the brand new stadium for Manchester United, and it's... What? No? Okay. No. Yeah, we go again. So welcome to the brand new stadium for FC United of Manchester. They've come such a long... Seriously? Manchester? Do they even... I'm, I'm not heard of them. Okay, no, yeah, yeah, no, no. You know, I'm just paid to be here. Like, you know, I'll say whatever you want me to. Welcome to the brand new home of Manchester Central. The official name for the stadium is obviously the famous player... S Sir Brett Dalton. The, oh, the Patrick Swayze look like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got it, got it, yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> Welcome, everyone, to the Sir Brett Dalton. Sir Brett Dalton. Oh, just one more. I've got this. Yeah. No, no. I am professional. Yeah, yeah. Do this for a living. Okay, yeah. Three. Two. No. Uh, yeah, I shouldn't do the countdown bit. No, okay. No, all right. I, I won't look. Just, I don't know. Shout. No, don't shout because that would. Okay, go again. And I just want to welcome everybody to the Sir Brett Dalton Stadium, a fantastic player, a legend of the club. The stadium is absolutely spectacular. Unfortunately, they might have scrimped a little bit on the ribbon cutting bit because, you know, I'm no toiletries expert, but I believe this is toilet roll. Do I at least get the, you know, the comedy big scissors? You know, the, yeah, stupidly sized large scissors. No? Any scissors? A knife. A sharp implement. Okay, fine. And now I officially declare this club. Open! So, Boo, thanks for joining us live here in the studio. Yeah, it's my pleasure, mate. Thanks for having me. I was just saying to the girls backstage that if there's a more handsome man than me, it's you. <laughs> well, uh, thanks, Larry. Is there any fit ones? Uh, before we get started, Bruno, I've got one question. What have you got under the hat you always wear a hat? <laughs> That'll be telling me. Um, 
But yeah, actually, I've got a full afro. It's massive. Um, if I unleashed it, I'd probably knock a light out of the studio. Well, if you need any hair tips, watch later on in the show, and I'd be happy to give you some one-on-one -on -one hair time later, Booty. Yeah, I'm all right, mate. I think I'll uh, I think I'll pass. I'm a bit I'm a busy boy. I'm actually washing it later. Right then, that's enough of Larry and his mates. Uh, welcome to episode 44, I'm Bood. If you've enjoyed it so far, make sure you smash the like button. Massively appreciated. Um, the rest of this episode, we're gonna do the draw for the training top competition lots of you have entered. Um, and I'm gonna go through my transfers. In the next episode, episode 45, that's when I'll go through the summer where I'll show you all the awards, bits of news that's happened in the summer. We'll talk about pre-season, which hasn't been huge, but it's been okay. Um, and we're going to have a live come in the next episode, which brilliantly, the first game of the season is at home in the new Sabret Dalton Stadium against Liverpool. So I just can't wait to get cracking with this series. Really can't wait. So thanks for joining me. So, should we get drawing? Now it's time to draw that trading top competition and good luck to you all. Um, as always, I've got a list of all your names on the pad. Uh, the wife allocates you a number, so she doesn't know any, anyone. She just gives random numbers to you all. Um, and if you don't know what this is, most of you probably know by now. Um, but this is just a website called random.org. Um, there's 48 of you entered, so you just put one to 48 in that box. And I hit that generate button, it just gives me a random number. I look on my list, and that's the winner. Now as I've been talking, hopefully, hopefully, all your names have flashed along the bottom. Now if you've got an eagle eye, you might notice that there's a lad, one of my favorite subscribers, called NSK. Now NSK applied for the last competition and uh, I forgot to put him in it. My wife did the list. I blame my wife. Um, so I promised him he could have two chances. So NSK's name is in the hat twice. So he's got double the chance of winning. Just so you know, just in case you see and think I've made a mistake. Right then, good luck to you all. Uh, remember, whoever you are that wins, I'll be emailing you, right? And you need to email me a picture when you get it of you in your trading top. Right then, we'll get on with it. I'm going to click the generate button. So good luck, everyone. Number 30. Number 30, 30, 30 is Alex Mort. Congratulations, Alex Mort. Uh, I'll get in touch with you through your comment. I'll send you my email address. And you'll have to send me your address. I'll have it. You'll pick what colour you want and size. We'll talk about that anyway. Um, and then I'll need a picture of you, Alex, in your top. So congratulations, mate. Sorry to everyone else. Um, give it a week or so. And I might do another one. <laughs> Right now, so what we'll do is we'll start straight here on the transfer history page. Um, it's the 13th of August, it's game day. So I've gone all the way through the summer, but I'm gonna show you all the summer news later. The rest of this episode is just about the transfers now. What we'll do first, we'll talk about the player out. And we've only had one player actually leave for a fee. Uh, and it's Flavio Caetano, I think you can say his name. Yeah, it's the guy I bought at the end of last year. Now the trouble was, he got loads of promise. I love the look of him. It cost us about 650 grand which is what his value still is. Um, six foot six, perfect for my tactic, perfect target man. Um, eventual replacement for McGee, who's on loan. He just couldn't get a work permit, Portuguese. Bloody Brexit, couldn't get a work permit. I kept trying, just wouldn't happen. Um, Renz came in with an offer and I just thought, let's take it. Um, 450, I think it was, so I'm massively disappointed because I thought it would have been a great player for us. Now, we have actually released two players and it's two absolute club legends. Um, a long serving left back, Leon Walder, and my big lanky right back, Chris McDonald, who's not played at all last year. Uh, Walder didn't play much either. I've been trying to get rid of him on freeze and no one even wanted him, so I've released him. Hopefully, they'll find themselves a club because they were two good players, Walder especially. You know, they, they got us up them, them first few years, they helped drag us, they were part of that team. Got us through them leagues rapidly. And um, just definitely not Premier League players. So let's get into the players in. And we have found some pretty tidy players, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I have spent 22 and a half million. Some of these transfers are spread out. I always try and do that. Um, but we've got some bargains. And I'll be honest with you, one, two, three, four, four of those players have come from the league below us. Um, kept me eyeing them last year. I'm pretty happy with them. First up is Silvano Barilari. We need a nickname for him. Now, he was at Fulham last year and his contract was coming up. We, we approached him, but I've ended up having to give him a, pay a fee for him, which wasn't a lot of money, a few hundred thousand pounds, you've just seen that. 
He's, he's actually worth 2.4 million. He scored 32 goals in 83 games for Fulham. Um, Italian, 21. 12, uh, 17, sorry, finishing. He's rapid. He's got good technique. Once I get training this guy like I've done with Mark Shelley, I think we've got a cracking player here. This is the perfect backup for Mark Shelley. Next up is a player I am buzzing about getting. Uh, I tried to get him on loan last year when we were a championship club and Southampton were a Premier League team. They wouldn't have it. Now they've been relegated. He wanted out. We've gone in. Um, I think it was Burnley as well waiting for him, but I offered him decent wage. I gave him 33 grand a week because I think he's a great player. Really like Ian Moss. I've been watching him now for two years on the game. Obviously, I think I might have talked about him once in an episode a while back. But look at his potential ability. Look at his current ability. He's a good passer of the ball. I mean, he's probably Jake Bird, Mark too. He's probably going to take Jake Bird. Jake Bird's position, probably. But he's freaking fantastic. I'm so impressed with this guy. Hey, Al, one of my favourite subscribers, did mention in the comments that I probably need to replace O'Keefe. And O'Keefe, he's been one of the you know, maybe unsung heroes, great stories of this entire series. It was, when we started out, if you go and watch back, or you remember the early episodes, I couldn't find a keeper anywhere. I struggled and I forced, I was forced into playing O'Keefe. We had a good promise, but he's not a non-league goalkeeper and he's just developed and developed and we brought other keepers in and he's always fought his corner. And I mean, he might fight his corner again against Raymond Barnett, who, by the way, is from Arsenal. He's won the FAU Challenge Cup as well, which was last year. He's won the under 80s Premier League Cup with Arsenal. He's just not getting any game time at 20. He wanted to leave. He was unhappy. He wanted first team football. Ain't going to happen for him at Arsenal. I put a bid in. We've got it. It's cost a bit of money, but I think he's going to be fantastic. He's six foot four. So he's bigger than me. He's a big lad. Aerial reach. He's got handling of 17. Reflexes of 14. I think he'll be a good goalkeeper in the future. Potentially, England goalkeeper. Next up was one of my Ram Raids, the Championship Football. Uh, I've actually got a player from Leeds United. He's called Jacob Toussaint. He's Belgium, 19 years old, left back. He's okay, he's probably coming in as a, as a backup maybe. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but he's got a bit of promise. His current ability is not great, but look at his potential ability. Like I say, with everything, once I start working with these lads and really concentrating on specific attributes, I think we might have a decent left back here. Next up, another player I've raided from our old division, the Championship, and it's Nicolas Sanchez. Now, he is naturally at the minute a centre half, but I was looking for a right back. I put right back in my searches, I put in specific attributes I wanted for my right back, and, and he came up. So, I am actually retraining him to be a right back. But the fact that he can cover at left back, play sweeper, uh, in sort of plays a wing back. And definitely plays the centre half. I think this is a fantastic player to have in the squad. And again, he's 21 years old, young, sticking with the youth. He's got promise, got room to grow, and he's Argentinian. They make great defenders. Next player is Barry Leverington. You probably remember him. He was a backup centre half last year. He's a good player with loads of promise. Who's with him alone? Liverpool have released him in the summer. Straight in, boom, got him. And um, somebody happy with this because he's good. You know, he's not the biggest centre half. Um, he's got great tackling, good teamwork, good positioning. He's marking and working on. Uh, I'm happy because Barry, as a fourth centre half, I think is good. And he knows the club, which is even better. Now, obviously, we've got a couple of loans in still. Um, you might remember from last year, but this is the first one. Freddie Harris, we signed on a two year loan deal. So he's into his second year. He's on loan from Arsenal. He was a mainstay last year. Will he be a first team this year? I don't know. It's going it's to be interesting. Buchanan, obviously, is. But it's going to be interesting to see who can battle it out with Harris this year, can Levering get in the team, um, can Treacher get in the team. We've got four good young centre halves really. We're probably going to ship in a lot of goals. I'm not I'm not expecting anything but to fight a relegation battle. Next up is Weltdale who wasn't on a two year deal but we managed to get him back for another year. A great left back, he was fantastic for me last year and I just, I just like how he plays. He's on loan from Spurs um, and he knows the club played 43 get times for us last year. They did really well so I'm happy he's probably going to be our starting left back again. And then the last loan is Big Richard McGee, six foot five, be big target man. His finishing's now 17. Great player. And uh, into his second year of his loan deal. Happy Steen. Now I could go through the entire squad, but you know most of the players already. And then what I'm probably going to do this season is highlight two players every episode, just as as the year goes on, you get to see them a bit more depth. But I'll look at the attributes, I'll look at their reports, see what kind of player they are, and person they are. Uh, 
But for this episode, I thought we'd look at our best player, our main man, who over the summer has gotten even better. He's definitely a Premier League striker now. We've had a million offers from Mark Shelley. His finishing has gone up again. It's now 19. I think uh, 20. I think he's gonna. He's just itching for that first England cap, and it'll come now. He's, now he's playing in the Premier League. Um, he has got two years left in his deal. I'm going to try and get him signed up this year. Right, there we go. That is the end of episode 44. Thanks for watching. It really does mean a lot to me. I really do appreciate it. all the people who've stuck with the series uh, and show it a lot of love in the comments. And with a like button, honestly, it's, it just helps me. I, I, I really do appreciate that. So if you did enjoy this episode, smash that like button for me. Don't be shy. Um, next episode should be out pretty soon, I hope. Um, obviously, we're going to show you all the awards that went on. We'll discuss what happened in pre-season on our tour of Scotland. I bet we open our campaign at home in this place behind me against Liverpool. Big time to come, boys. Big and girls. Big time. Can't wait. Right then, I've been booed. As always, you've been great. I'll see you next time.